The Memphis Grizzlies have been the center of a good amount of NBA controversy recently. From John Morant to Dylan Brooks, I think the potential of this Grizzlies team has been really lost in all this media coverage. While their playoff exit wasn't the greatest, there are many circumstances you have to consider. One being injuries to numerous key Grizzlies, another being Dylan Brooks shitting himself. Although Dylan Brooks did in fact shit himself, I'm actually pretty high on Brooks and would have paid him 15 to 18 annually. The 86 is a bit much, but not too insane, I guess. Anyways, the Grizzlies made a major move this summer to replace that defensive tenacity that was brought by Dylan Brooks. As we all know, patience does not exist in the modern NBA media space, but John Morant and Jaron Jackson are only 23, and Desmond Bain is only 25, but was drafted after both Ja and Jaron. This is still a team with an extremely young core that lost to arguably the greatest and not arguably the most experienced playoff player of all time, not to mention AD playing all-time defense and Laker role players putting in work, which definitely paid off for them. This is a team with a legit big three that are all young and ascending. While John Morant's suspension will definitely impact the team, I think they are more than good enough to stay afloat while also obviously giving Bain and Jaron more shots and have them develop offensive skills in game without Ja. And then when he comes back, they will both make the game much easier for each other. The major move that Memphis did make this offseason was trading the 25th pick, a top four protected Warriors pick next year, and Tyus Jones for Marcus Smart. While this was obviously a larger deal involving Kristaps Porzingis, we are not worried about all that right now. But in all honesty, I kind of really don't like this trade. I mean, Marcus Smart is good and will provide the defensive tenacity you lost with Brooks and some playmaking while Ja is out. And is obviously a good player, but I really think Memphis would have been much better off just keeping Tyus Jones. Two first round picks is also, again man, it's a bit much. I know one is a 25th, but the other has the potential to be late teens to early 20s as well. His contract isn't that bad, but I think you could have just brought Tyus Jones back on a cheaper deal and gotten a defensive wing at 25, and then potentially move that pick, another pick, and then maybe another pick for OG and an OB and really go crazy. I think this trade results in a lot of Josh Smart and Desmond Bain lineups come playoff time, and depending on the matchup, this could be good, but also has its pitfalls if the Grizzlies don't have other quality wing options. Again, these three and then, you know, Jaron and Steven Adams, I think would be a fine lineup and you could definitely work that out. But, you know, it does create a little bit of, you know, I mean, it, it, it creates a strange, you know, scenario for you when you have three elite guards that are all, or, you know, guard, I mean, like Desmond Bain, I mean, he's guard height, guard size, you know what I mean? Like he's more of like a wing player, but you, you, I mean, I mean, y'all know what I mean by that. But one thing we do know about Marcus Smart is that he will be the vocal leader that this locker room is looking for. And this is what I kind of understand about giving up, you know, the extra stuff to get smart. Not only do you need, you know, that defensive intensity, as I've said 19 times at this point, but, you know, having a good vocal veteran leader is definitely something that I think Memphis was looking for after this whole John Morant situation. And not only did they add Marcus Smart for veteran leadership, but they also did add Derrick Rose. While his and Jaws situations are obviously completely and totally separate and very different Derrick Rose understands being at the top of his profession and losing it all, and I think he'll definitely help Ja come back stronger. Rose and Ja are also in the same archetype of players, you know, I mean, obviously when Rose was at his peak, you know, that athletic, high-flying, playmaking guard. As far as Rose on the court, I really don't know how much we see. I think he might see the court during Ja's suspension, but after that, I don't really think so. The Grizzlies appeared to approach this offseason with the goal of improving their locker room and leadership, and I really think they hit all bases with that. As I said, I think some more solidified wing play could help this team, but in all honesty, I think this roster as it stands is in a position to compete. If Ja, Jaron, and Bain continue their development, I think the current roster in Memphis is fine. They have a plethora of young wings, including Zaire Williams, David Roddy, John Conchar, and Jake LaRavia, of which you'd hope at least a few become at least decent. Many of these wings are athletic and versatile too, which is key for role players today. But even where they aren't athletic, they have a guy like Luke Kennard who shot 49% from three last season. I also like having a guy like Steven Adams on a favorable contract. His injury was an underrated aspect of the Grizzlies falling short last season. Memphis's defense, rebounding, and overall success suffered when he went down. They also have Brandon Clark returning next season, who was definitely a key component of this Grizzlies roster. I really think this was Ja's wake-up call. I think he will fully realize the position he is in and come back after his suspension looking like one of the best players in our league. While I don't think the Grizzlies had a necessarily bad culture, it's clear that there were some holes with the previous group, and I think Marcus Smart and Derrick Rose patch up all these holes. 
While it's easy to be down about the Grizz right now, I think there's something cooking in Memphis that no one is prepared for. Again, this was a team that was the number two seed in the West last year with a very, very, very young core. Key injuries again, Brandon Clark, you know, again, right? Brandon Clark, Steven Adams, you might not, oh, they still have Ja, Jaron, Bain, ah, da, da, like they should have been fine. Those guys are really impactful guys who have a big, big impact on this team's success. And again, you know, they pick up some other guys. They also, oh man, I didn't even mention Xavier Tillman. Uh, you know, they picked up Josh Christopher uh, in a trade from Houston. They got Kenny Lofton, who, you know, I mean, he's been balling out in summer league and stuff for the last two years. I don't know if he gets in the rotation or not, but hey, he's 20 years old. Again, they just have a ton of guys. They picked up Isaiah Todd for some seconds, I believe, or a second or something, or, or I don't even know if they gave up a second or if they were just in the deal. I don't really know, but I do know. I don't know, man. Like, I look at the Western Conference, and I said this in my Mavs video, which, by the way, go check that out. I got a Mavs video out, a Suns video out, a Spurs video out. What What else? I mean, I, I don't even know off top. Hornets, you know what I mean? All that. Pistons, Pacers, you know, that's more Eastern Conference stuff. But, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm trying to hit, you know, most of my bases here. But back to my point about the West. Yes, the Nuggets are an outstanding team, obviously. Do I think they could repeat in the West? Absolutely. Do I think they could repeat as champions? Absolutely. But guys, it's not just cut and dry. It's over. Like, it's not like, I, and again, you know, I'm not going to go into my full tangent about this like I did in the Dallas video, but people, you know what I mean? Like, people just think someone wins a championship and then it's like, oh, they're just going to win the next two or three. Like, nah, man, like teams adapt, stuff changes. Again, I completely understand that Denver playoff run was dominant and I completely understand people. But again, man, you look at this Grizzlies team, the depth. These guys are still growing and getting better. The defensive, you know, tenacity and like, you know what I mean? Like not only do you have smart, but you have the DPOY, Jaron Jackson. Then you have Steven Adams. You know what I mean? Like, man, I, again, I, I think this team, you know, if we do want to talk straight matchup with Denver, I think this team does match up very well with Denver, you know, much better than a team like a Phoenix or even, or even like the Clippers. I mean, honestly, right? Like, I mean, these guys have that interior defense and that perimeter defense and that intensity. In all honesty, I mean, shoot. I mean, listen, y'all can come back to this video in a year. I think the Lakers are very good. I think there's a lot of really good teams. I think the Pelicans, which, oh man, I got to make a Pelicans video. I do have to make a Pelicans video. I mean, obviously that's all dependent on Zion's health. But again, I think there's a lot of guys out West and I think, but in all honesty, I mean, looking at it right now, I really think the Grizzlies might be my second, you know, team. Like, I'm not, like, again, the Suns, you know, they got Beal. They made some depth moves. I like them, but I don't know if any of these other teams, again, Golden State, like, I, you know, I mean, they're old, but, they, I mean, again, like, like they're still going to be a problem. And they still got a whole ton of young guys. I mean, they just got rid of Poole. Uh, you know, Looney, you know, Chris Paul, again, that's going to be an interesting fit, but I think they're smart enough to figure that one out. But don't be surprised if, you know, the Grizzlies are in that upper tier going into the playoffs or, you know, we get to midseason and everyone's like, oh, man, the Grizzlies are looking very, very scary because it's like, bro, they already, right, like, like they've shown, they, they've gotten that playoff experience. They've played against, you know, I mean, they played against Steph Curry. They played against LeBron James. You know, I mean, they played against the guys, right, the guys that understand the most about playoff basketball, the guys that face off against each other in the finals for four straight years. You know what I mean? These are the guys that they have lost to, and they have also lost guys last season again, man. And they also had all this stuff going on, all this media coverage, and again, it, it, it impacts things. It definitely, especially when you have a situation like Jaws, definitely impacts things. Bre you know, I'm Brent, I'm Brandon Clark. Dylan Brooks was just like, oh, he was just talking. and But again, that, that also impacts things. That clearly impacted his game again, man. I think this Grizzlies team, again, you know, it's like everyone wants to clown, all blah, blah, blah. Like, nah, man. I, I think the Grizzlies are in a great, great position. And I always talk about, you know, I mean, now when I talk about the future, future of the West, I will, I made a Spurs video, which y'all should go check that out because the Spurs are going to be very, very scary. And it's not just because of Wemby. There's a whole lot more stuff going on there that y'all might not know about. But I look at, you know, San Antonio, Portland now with, you know, I mean, you have Scoot, Sharp, uh, Anthony Simons, you know, all these guys, or, or all these guys, I mean, all these guys are going to get from picks, all these assets they're going to get from the Dame trade, no matter where he goes, which by the way, I mean, he's going to Miami, I mean, we all know that at this point, but I look at them, you know, them being the Spurs, the Blazers, and the Thunder as the future of the West, but in all honesty, I think the Grizzlies can be right up in that tier, just because of how young their core is, again, these guys are still extremely young, these guys are going to be, like, again, like, right, I, and I think they blossom next year, I think Jack, I, I really think Jack comes back and he has, he's going to have the right people in his corner now. And he's going to be like, you know what? Like, man, and he, he's, he's going to be feeling the type of way. You know what I mean? Like if you're John Morant and you're like, you know what, man, if I can go out here and I, I win a championship, you know what I mean? Make the finals, you know, have a really deep playoff run, iconic playoff run. 
and have these people, you know what I mean? All these people are talking about me, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, you know what I mean? I think he might come back with a different edge to him and a different, you know what I mean, kind of focus. And I, I, even, you know, even when he wasn't, even when he was hurt in the playoffs, which by the way, when I talk about those key injuries at the start of the video, even when he, you know what I mean, he wasn't, he was still playing, but you know what I mean? He was obviously, like, again, man, I, I, I think Ja... Again, he's had some outstanding playoff, you know what I mean, games. Uh, again, I love this Memphis team. Getting on my good tangent at the end of the video. But that's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up and sub the channel. Helps me out a ton. Comment down below any video ideas. Turn on that noti bell. And yeah, I'm out. Peace.